Good morning and welcome to FX Street Currency in Play. I'm Matt Brown. I'm joined down the line by Ryan Littlestone, uh, who is a trader at forexflow.live. Good morning to you, Ryan. Are you well? Yeah, very well, Matt. Yourself? Very well. Happy Monday. Um, well, let's kick off with the headlines, uh, starting off with Euro dollar. Uh, Euro at fresh daily lows with uh, politics wa waiting on the pair. Um, we, we've seen, obviously, Spain, Catalonia, this issue continuing, uh, Spain looking to, or Madrid looking to take some power back from the Catalonian regions. Um, so that kind of weighing a little bit on Europe this morning. Um, obviously Brexit negotiations still ongoing and there's a bit of uh, to and fro and dilly dallying as to be expected there. And moving on, looking at dollar yen, um, Abe's victory weighs on the yen with abnomics seen uh, taking a second phase, um, thumping victory for the Japanese PM and his LDP party this morning. Albeit, though, if you actually looked at the currency pair, certainly dollar-yen, you, you wouldn't really realise there was an election, yeah. albeit dollar uh, uh, getting a bit of bid. Um, so let's, um, let's have a look at your charts. I mean, starting off with dollar-yen, um, seeing obviously that strength there on the back of the election. What's your take on this? I mean, no, no real significant moves, and uh, I suppose the market's uh, probably quite happy uh, that, uh, as expected, that victory came, uh, came through. Yeah, I think you nailed it there, Matt. You know, it was expected to win. Um, I thought we might get a little knee jerk, uh, knee jerk pop on the just the, the relief rally, a uh, minor one, which we did. We opened up some, you know, 20, 25 pips higher uh, in early trading on Sunday, Monday morning. Uh, rode up to uh, 104 and, and sneaked in there for a couple of pips and uh, came back down. But we've, we found some support around the sort of, uh, you know, 60, 70 area and we're consolidating there at the moment. Um, but you're quite right that the market was fully expecting it. Um, he did probably slightly better uh, than what even he thought he was going to get. So that's that's good news as well. Um, and the, the train, the Abe train continues to, to roll in uh, Japan. And uh, I think we're going to go back now on the particular dollar. We'll switch quickly back to, to watching what's happening in the US. Um, obviously, we've got uh, the upcoming uh, Fed meetings, you know, will they hike, won't they hike? Um, but the, the dollar seems to have found a little bit of a bid, um, especially, you know, Thursday, Friday, late last week. And it's it's sort of just been, you know, grinding high. It's not been anything, you know, big uh, or, or volatile. It's just been on one of its grinding trails. And uh, that's something to keep an eye on. Um, and again, we're, we're back to bond watching. I understand. Um, just before we look at the 10 year, just dollar yen touching that 114 level, um, albeit it's, it's come back a little bit. Uh, if we can break above uh, the 114 level, do you feel we could be breaking out of, of this current range technically that we've seen in, in dollar yen of late? Yeah, it's possible. You know, we've got some big levels up at, uh, you know, the 114, 40, 60 area. You know, if you look at the chart, you've got those big two double uh, or big two highs there mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, they've marked the top of the recent range. And, and that's going to be a big level. Um, so if the dollar is going to do something, you know, that's the sort of level it needs to break. Um, break there and, you know, you can bring probably 120 back into focus again. But, you know, big levels are there for a reason. And uh, if it fails there, then then we're stuck in this range again and we'll probably see it come all the way back down again. But, um, yeah, it definitely, definitely looks like uh, the dollar's, you know, finding itself a, a, a pretty strong bid. Um, you know, as, as I say, it's not spectacular, but um, it's 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 grinding up there. And if, if it does hold, these are the big levels that we've got to take on. Um, so if, you, if you're looking to, if you're in longs, it's the sort of level that you might want to take some profit off against if it struggles. Uh, and conversely, if you're looking for shorts, um, you can trade against those levels and, and keep it fairly tight in case you get the break. Understood. Uh, moving on to the 10 year, we've seen the dollar uh, strengthen a little bit of late. And that, that's reflected actually in the 10 year treasury yields. Um, coming back into favour. Just talk us through this, if you're trading this outright or what you should be looking for here if you are trading the dollar against other currency pairs. Yeah, sure. Um, the dollar's been handcuffed to, to Treasury yields again. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those correlations that, you know, generally happens all the time, but at some times it's stronger than other times. And we're seeing one of those strong times at the moment. Um, no, US 10-year yields are up at uh, 2.39, um, just below a, a big level at 240. Um, and 
again, it's one of these big levels that we've got to watch. If we break there, then we're likely to see a, you know, a, a significant push up in, in those bond yields and the dollar is going to follow along with it. So it could be, you know, you, you will have to watch two markets at once mm-hmm. um, to gauge what's going to happen. You know, if, if, if bond yields go up through 240, 250, um, then that top side in, in dollar yen may not be so strong because, you know, the dollar is just going to go with bonds and, and that's it. It's, it's going to ignore the technicals and all the big levels in the way. So, you know, when you are looking at something like dollar yen, you have to match it off against what's going on in bonds at the moment. Um, and if there's signs uh, that it's struggling at uh, at 240, uh, like it has done previously, then you've got to worry about the top side uh, for dollar yen and, and whether we're going to have another top and, and see it drop back again. Understood. Uh, moving on, looking at, uh, well, the euro against the dollar, a uh, bit of weakness, as we've already mentioned, in the euro this morning, uh, trading with this kind of 117 handle now. Mm-hmm. Again, te- you know, potentially testing some of, some of the recent lows, and uh, there's a lot, obviously a lot of downside potentially with the euro dollar if the political uh, situation continues. Where can this go? Is it, is it a combination of uh, euro, euro driving this or, again, dollar strength? What, where can we see this going in the maybe short term and medium term? Yeah, as you say, you know, you're correct. It's, it's politics again um, and it's the dollar again. And, you know, there's, there's two forces pushing against the, the euro at the moment. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting a bit worried about Spain because now it's, it's sort of coming to crunch time. Um, as we know, it, it's a, a very flammable situation at the best of times. And, you know, if uh, Madrid goes marching into Catalonia to, you know, overrun the government, that's, that's, I can't see it ending well. And if we start getting problems on the streets, uh, violence, which obviously we hope we don't, but, mm-hmm. you know, that situation could, could tip very quickly and that's going to affect the euro. And, we, you know, we're 40-odd pips off from a, a big level down at uh, 117. Um you know, it's been the, the recent low of a, of a consolidation phase. And again, it's another big level in FX markets that we've got to monitor. If we get a break then, it's a proper break. You know, we could head down to 115, that sort of area. Understood. And and even uh, trading uh, the euro against the yen can be quite an interesting trade. Yeah. We haven't got a chart <laughs> at the moment. Uh, not for the faint-hearted, but it, it's something that there's that, potentially um, a, a trade in that currency pair at the moment as well. Yeah. And uh, looking ahead at the macro data or economic calendar, uh, where we've got the Chicago Fed National Activity Index due out later on, um, look, that's not a big number, really. No. Um, there, there isn't anything to, to whet the appetite of traders today, so I think the focus will be on political situations and, and certainly looking at Spain and, and how that pans out. But looking ahead at the week, obviously we've got ECB on Thursday, uh, we've got GDP data out from the US and we've got a, a lot of PMI data out tomorrow. So is there anything uh, looking ahead at the week as a trader that, that's jumping out at you? Yeah, the, you know, obviously the GDP numbers are going to be big. Mm-hmm. Um, the ECB is going to be big because apparently, you know, we're, we're supposedly going to get their ideas for, for the next taper and their next moves. And, you know, the market's got its expectations pretty much set now. Um, you know, they're looking in the region of, of six to nine months uh, extension on QE and anywhere from 20 to 30 billion cut. So I don't think they'll be too far off. Um I think my view has been that they'll perhaps go longer on, on the extension and go to a year because it doesn't really matter how long they go for because they can always cut it short. But mm-hmm. if they go short, they can't then go longer. Um, but, yeah, it, the data is quite uh, the only part of the week and then it uh, ramps up uh, for the rest of the week and uh, hopefully it should give us some good trading conditions. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to that. But in the meantime, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us down the line here on FX Street Currency and Play. Thank you.